Hello and welcome. I spoke those words 307 days ago for the first time and set out on a journey of cooking every food in old school RuneScape, but also my journey of making YouTube content. Here I am, 50 episodes and a Group Ironman series later, thanking anyone who has supported the series or the channel so far and welcoming those here for the first time. If you like what you see, let me know in the comments and subscribe to see what great stuff I have planned in the future. When I started cooking every food in the game, I had a lot of comments saying, just put it all in one video. But I wanted the journey of doing it one by one and growing as a content creator at the same time. But now that it's all finished, here it is in one big video. Enjoy. And there you have it, cooked meat. You see the game does not differentiate where you get your raw meat will all end up as cooked meat. So let's cook those. One. Oh, what have we discovered here? It did stop cooking the meat. Well, haven't we all learned something here today? And we cook the boar meat then. Oh, so there you have it. But now they're all cooked meat. Unbelievable. First, we'll use our raw rook thank you meat on the cooking range to obtain some cooked rook thank you meat. Cook our raw yak meat. And finally, our undead beef to obtain a very fitting for our regular outfit cooked meat that is green. Our fish. Now, anchovies are a fish. Uh, however, shrimp are crustaceans. They're decapods, which is interesting why they look exactly the same, only with a difference in colour in the game. And we'll use our raw chicken on the cooking range to obtain some cooked chicken. And we'll use our undead chicken again to obtain some very thematic for our outfit, green cooked chicken. Put one of these bird meats on a spit so we get a skewered bird meat and use that on our fire. And there we are, there is our roast bird meat. Use our skewered rabbit on the fire. We will obtain roast rabbit. Use our raw rabbit on our range to obtain cooked rabbit. Let's cook that bread dough on our range to obtain bread. I learned from the cook in the Blue Moon Inn of how to combine a piece of bread and some cooked meat to make this delicious steak sandwich. Alright, so let's first cook our raw sardine on the cooking range. Let's just cook one. There we are. Let's cook our raw herring. And let's cook our raw pie. And there we have it. Three delicious fish. Okay, so what we can do with these pie dishes is put our pastry doughs in them to make the pie shell, the base of our pie, the key ingredient. So let's show what happens when you actually use proper cooked meat on your pie shell. Ah, we get an uncooked meat pie. Great. All right, let's use our cooked chicken on our pie shell. There we are. Now we have an uncooked meat pie. All right, so let's cook our meat pies first. You can see now that we don't distinguish what meat is inside. We simply have a meat pie. So it's up to preference whether you use chicken or beef. So let's use our red berries on our pie shell to obtain an uncooked berry pie. And we'll now cook that. Delicious. Let's use that cooking apple on the pie shell. And we have an uncooked apple pie. All right, so let's cook our final pie of the day. And there we have it. Four delicious pies. Which order shall we do them in? Let's do them in the order we caught them. Let's first cook our raw bass on the cooking range. Let's cook our raw cod. And let's cook our raw mackerel. Beautiful. So with our fruit blast, let's click create. There we are. Now we just need to pour them into an empty cocktail glass and garnish with sliced lemon. So let's... Pour our mixed blast 
into our cocktail glass and then add our sliced lemon and we add the finishing touches to obtain our fruit blast. This time selecting pineapple punch and we'll create this and it tells us the rest of the ingredients here so we need to pour it in an empty glass garnish with lime chunks, pineapple chunks and a slice of orange. Alright so now if we click pour on our mixed punch there we are we pour the cocktail and add the finishing touches to obtain our pineapple punch. We'll start with the trout as it was the most elusive to obtain. There we have it. We'll cook both salmon. Don't want to waste any XP here. And then we'll cook our raw rainbow fish. Beautiful. But we're going to select toad crunchies because we have our two toad legs and our gnome spice. And we click create. And then we can see we have a half made crunchy in our inventory as opposed to our half baked crunchies. So we simply cook our half made crunchies again on the gnome cooker. Now we have an unfinished crunchy. We use our equa leaves on top, making sure we don't eat them, to make our finished toad crunchies. Spice crunchies. Excellent. Half made crunchy. So let's cook that again. And this time to finish off, we'll be adding some gnome spice. Beautiful. There we have some spicy crunchies. Prepare, and we have our worm crunchies, or at least some half made crunchies. So let's cook those. And of course, we need gnome spice to finish them off. Excellent. Some worm crunchies. And prepare our choc chip crunchies. There we are, some half made ones, so let's bake those. Get our unfinished crunchies, and to finish these off, I think we're going to need some chocolate dust. So let's trade Hudo here, and we will purchase some chocolate dust. So let's buy that, and let's use that to finish our unfinished crunchies. There we are, the final touches to make choc chip crunchies. So we'll cook that tuna first, and then we'll cook our lobster, ah, that perfect shade of orange, and we'll cook our raw swordfish, perfect. We'll start with our fish pie, and we'll obtain part fish pie. Then we'll use our cod on our part fish pie to make part fish pie. <laughs> and then we'll use our potato on our part fish pie to make a raw fish pie. Despite the potato being the only raw ingredient, it is now an entirely raw fish pie. But let's cook that now on our cooking range to obtain a fish pie, which will boost our fishing level by three. Next, let's do our admiral pie. Let's add our salmon to our pie shell. Let's add our tuna to our part admiral pie. And then add our potato to our part admiral pie, which now becomes raw despite having cooked fish in it. So let's use our raw admiral pie on the cooking range with a whopping 210 cooking XP to obtain an admiral pie which boosts our fishing by five making this fish pie entirely useless. Thin snail first, lean snail second, turns into a nice red color and big old fat snail last and a nice orange one. A heal. Increasing amount of hit points from thin to fat. Alright, let's click on mix. And there we have it. Wizard Blizzard. So let's select that. Let's create. Fantastic, we have a mixed blizzard in our cocktail shaker. Now of course we're going to need a cocktail glass. We're also going to need a knife. A pineapple and some lime to, in order to garnish this drink. All right, so now if we pour our mixed blizzard, we have everything to make a wizard blizzard. Uh, but it does sound delicious anyway, a lot of lime and some vodka. I mean, who wouldn't like that? And isn't it have a nice green color? All right, so now we've got our mixed SGG for short green guy. I guess that wouldn't be too bad of a flavor. There we have a short green guy. I guess because normally when I have them, I definitely have more than one, and so a lot of 
alcohol and then a lot of cream sitting in the stomach. Well, it's never ideal, is it? But if that's your bag, then I mean, go for it. So we'll pour the mixed dragon. So we add the pineapple chunks and cream and we attain mixed dragon. Then we add ingredients, right? but we have to warm it to finish. So let's head around here to the little range, little cooktop, and use that mixed dragon on the range. And there we have it, the drunk dragon. Right, so again, uh, we're going to need to heat it. Right, so we need to pour this into an empty cocktail glass, heat it, and garnish with chocolate dust and cream. Right, so let's buy the cream and the chocolate dust now. So we're going to pour our mixed Saturday, and we'll add our final ingredients, and we have a chocolate Saturday. Cocktail shaker will mix this up for us. Fantastic. So we need to pour this into an empty glass, garnish with diced orange and lemon, sliced lime, and an equa leaf. Okay. And we've poured the special to make a blueberry special. Let's re-equip re our rolling pin and use our machete with the thatch spar. Excellent. To obtain a skewer stick. If we use that, we obtain spider on a stick. To obtain a spider on a stick, but a cooked version. Give me that spider carcass. Excellent. Let's use that arrow shaft on the spider carcass. Ah, and we obtain spider on a shaft. We'll use our spider on shaft on the cooking range. And indeed it does cook, and we have spider on shaft. Uh, garden pie, I'll show you right here. Let's add our tomato in first. And we have a part garden pie. We'll add our onion in. Now it's become, again, part garden pie. And finally, we'll add our cabbage. And it's a raw garden pie. Beautiful. All right, let's cook our garden pie first. Beautiful. You can see that it increases our farming level to by three. Let's add our Golova Nova fruit top to our other pie shell to obtain a uncooked botanical pie instead of raw botanical pie that's interesting and we'll cook that on the range beautiful we can see that raises our herb law level by four All right so now if we go to prepare half-baked butter fruit butter is now lit up for us because we contain all these delicious ingredients so let's create and there we have it so to bake this we need to garnish with gnome spices excellent all right so you can see now these are half baked where this one is half made, right? So we cook the half made butter. Excellent, now it is unfinished and it said to finish it, we need gnome spice. So let's buy the ever useful gnome spice, use it on the unfinished butter and excellent, we have a fruit butter. Okay, let's create this. Excellent, now we need to come Finish baking it. And no additional spice or anything required. We have our toad butter. Uh, so if we prepare this, it's now lit up for us. We'll create. And we need to bake this and then garnish it with equa leaves. All right, so let's pre-purchase those equa leaves here. Let's use our half-made butter on the gnome cooker to cook it. It's now unfinished. And we use our equa leaves as the garnish to finish off our worm butter. Ah, uh, excellent. Perfect. There we go. Let's create that. We'll need to bake it and then garnish with some equa leaves. So, buy some more of those. Use our half-made butter on the gnome cooker. And then garnish it with equa leaves. Beautiful. To make some vegetable butter. Alright, final one. And prepare. And to finish, we'll need to bake and then garnish with equa leaves. So, let's buy... One more equa leaf, and finally cook our half-made butter to get our unfinished butter. Use the leaves on it, and there we have it, cheese plus tom butter. Next, we can use our raw crown of one on our cooking range. You see we're presented with an option. Now let's just pick one. We have a poison crown one or a cooked crown one. Right, so for those who are unable to correctly cook one and cook them poorly, we will obtain a poison one. Right, this will actually lower our HP. However, if we use our raw one on our cooking range 
to obtain a cooked Karen one, we obtain more XP, and now this would heal substantially more HP. I believe it's 18. Favorite range and cook our raw Ugthanki meat. Interestingly about the Ugthanki meat is that typically with meat you can cook it twice to burn it. However, with Ugthanki meat, we can't do that. Right? But if you try this with regular cow meat, you'll be able to burn it even if you've cooked it the first time. Right, so next what we'll do is add that thank you meat into our mixture to obtain kebab mix. Right, but we can't make a kebab without the pitta itself. And so we have our pot of flour in our inventory, uh, but we're going to need some water to mix that with to make the dough. Right, so I'm going to demonstrate that we can use either a bucket of water, we can use a jug of water, and you can also use a bowl of water depending on your preference. Uh, not really too fussed myself. Uh, so we'll use the bucket of water and we'll choose this pitta dough. Right, so now we have this pitta dough here and we'll come over to our range and we'll cook the pitta dough to obtain pitta bread. And we're going to use that pitta bread with our kebab mix in order to obtain the beautiful Ugthanki kebab by a bottle of special kebab sauce. Right, so we have our hot sauce and so we can use this on a regular kebab. There is also a uh, smelling kebab which you get by also trying to make a kebab in the way I showed you today. Uh, however if you're a terrible cook it will end up smelling a little bit because you don't do it just right. However we are a good cook and we obtained our proper Ugthanki kebab. So now if we use our red hot sauce on the kebab, we obtain a super kebab. Right, and so if we try and cook the raw umli on its own, and use it on the range, we'll see that the meat was far too delicate, and we burnt it. So we're going to need to wrap it up. So why don't we use our palm leaf on the raw umli, and obtain a wrapped umli. Therefore, we've protected our delicious meat. Once we cook that, we will obtain... Our final cooked umli wrap. So first of all, I guess we'll take our hard-earned salicep cap and add that to a pie shell. Beautiful, we have an uncooked mushroom pie. Next, we'll take our dragon fruit, or one of, add it to a pie shell, and we'll just make one. Uncooked dragon fruit pie, drink our chef's delight, and we can see our cooking is boosted up to 96. And so let's use our strawberry on our pie shell, which will make part summer pie. And so let's make multiple of these, not taking any chances. We use our watermelon on the part summer pie to again make part summer pie. And we'll finish them off with our cooking apples to make a raw summer pie. All right, now let's get to cooking. Let's first cook our mushroom pie that we worked so hard to get our salicep cap. Beautiful, this will boost our crafting level by four. Next, our uncooked dragon fruit pie. There we are, that will raise our fletching level by four. And then our summer pie, we'll just cook one of them to get our summer pie, and that will be plus five agility. Okay, so first we need to use our potato on our bowl of water. Right, we will obtain incomplete stew potato in water. So let's add those four in there. Now we can either make stew with beef or chicken, but first we have to cook it. So let's cook the raw beef on the range and cook the raw chicken on the range. We've seen this before. Then we have to add that cooked meat into the stew to obtain uncooked stew. So we'll do two beef. And we'll add our two chicken into the stew as well to obtain two uncooked chicken stews. And now to make stew, we simply cook the uncooked stew on the range. So let's use that on the range. And we will not cook all of them since we want to make some curries. We'll make two. So we'll make one at a time. 
So we'll just make sure we're cooking one beef stew. Yeah, and we'll choose one. All right, so not that we can tell the difference, but there is a stew with beef in it. And here is an uncooked stew. We'll just cook one with chicken in it. But look, it doesn't even care. It cooks the next one in our inventory, right? So you cannot actually distinguish which one has beef and which one has chicken once you make the uncooked stew. Right, so if we want to make a curry, we have two options. We can use our hard-earned curry leaves, three of them, on the uncooked stew. And then we get an uncooked curry. Or we can use our spice on the uncooked stew to also obtain uncooked curry. And unlike gnome spice, where that essentially has unlimited uses, human spice uh, is consumed in one go. Right, so let's cook these curries. Let's just cook both of them. Beautiful. Right, so let's click on our wormhole and create that. Right, and then we see the message. You just need to bake this and garnish with equa leaves to complete. Right, so let's use that half-made bowl on the gnome cooker to cook that one. Right, we obtain an unfinished bowl. All right, Hudo, give us those equa leaves. Buy one of those. And we'll use that with our unfinished bowl to obtain a wormhole. Fantastic. Vegetable. Perfect. So now we need to bake and garnish with equa leaves again. Use that half-made bowl with a gnome cooker. And we'll need some more equa leaves. Here we go. Garnish. And there's a veg ball. Oh, I like that. That one looks delicious. Tangled toad's legs. Perfect. We've got our toad legs there and, of course, our gnome spice. Right, we need just need to bake it. Let's have a little snack first. Let's eat some onions. Mmm, yummy. All right, let's half made bowl into tangled toad's legs. Let's prepare that now. Fantastic. We need to bake this. Garnish with two pots of cream and chocolate dust. Use our chocolate dust with the unfinished bowl there. We pour over an obscene amount of cream and dust with chocolate dust. Mmm. And use an iron spit on the raw beast to obtain skewered beast and then cook it over the fire. So let's chop down this tree and light ourselves a fire. All right, so skewered beast, use on the flame. And we have obtained roast beast meat. Let's use our raw monkfish on the cooking range. Try and cook them all. Cooked one, cooked two, and cooked three. Excellent. Three for three. That's what we like to see. No waste here. We're going to put the raw chompy on the spit to get a skewered chompy. We're going to make ourselves a fire. And we're going to cook our skewered chompy. Excellent. And there you have cooked chompy, so we'll tick that one off our list. Is the raw bear meat. Right, so we'll make all of these. Part wild pie. You can see now we have our pie dish with our raw meat in it. Then we add a raw chompy to our part wild pie. And we can see now we've just basically stacked the bird on top of the bear meat there. Finally, we add the raw rabbit to the part wild pie. And this will give us raw wild pies. Now surely we won't burn all four. Let's add these to the range and cook these up. Oh, we cooked the first one. Perfect. And as we can see, they raise our, obviously our hit points, but our slayer and our ranged level. All right, so instead of situating ourselves next to our range, we'll first sit next to this sink. And we'll first start with our vial of water. And so let's fill that up at the sink to obtain, you guessed it, a vial of water. Let's take one of our toad flax and clean that. And we will put that into our vial of water to obtain a unfinished toad flax potion. Then we'll take our crushed bird's nest and add that to our toad flax potion to obtain a saradomen brew. Our bowl to the sink first and fill that up to obtain two bowls of water. Now we've just got one nettle, so we'll add that to our bowl of water to obtain nettle water. Now while there is the option to drink that nettle water, 
We'd rather some hot nettle tea, wouldn't we? So let's cook that on the range. To obtain nettle tea. This time we heat the water first, so we'll use our bowl of water on the cooking range to obtain a bowl of hot water. And we'll use that bowl of hot water on our empty cup to obtain a cup of hot water. Oh, I've been interrupted by Rick Turpentine. Hello, champ. It is my lucky day. Oh, a spinach roll. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. Thanks very much. I'll hold on to that. Love old Terpsy. All right, so what we'll do is add our guam leaf into our cup of hot water. And we'll obtain a herb tea mix. All right, so once we've added one guam leaf, we can start to add our other herbs. So we'll add a marantil. We'll add a second guam leaf. And we will add a Haralander. Beautiful. And there is a three-dose Guthix Rest Tea. All right, so let's use raw jubbly on Ogre Spit Roast. Look at that thing go. Huge. And we cook it on the first go. Perfect. And let's cook these sharks. Nothing fancy about it. We simply use them on the range. And we've cooked the first one because we're a bloody legend. Are we going to go five for five? Oh, you better believe we are. Move over, cook. We're the new chef in town. Hello and welcome to episode number 34 of Cooking Every Food in the Game. Today we are outside the wheat field and the windmill. Just north of Lumbridge, we've been here before, uh, way back, if you want to go back and check that out, where we showed how to pick wheat and make a pot of flour for the first time. I'm going to do that again today, just to refresh everyone's memories, but also it's a special occasion. Today we're going to bake a cake. We'll pick a few wheat while we're here. Because at the time of recording, it is my... Mate Gaz's birthday. Happy birthday, champion. And so we're going to make him a wee birthday cake. Up to the top of the ladder here. I'm going to use our grain on the hopper. We're going to operate the hopper controls. And we'll make the descent to pick up our pot of flour. Now in classic me fashion, I wanted to make multiple cakes, and I only brought one pot of flour! Ah, uh, Well, I'll be back in a tick. Alright, here we go, we're back. We've got ourselves some more pots. Let's uh, make the other pots of flour. Ah, oh, this is nostalgic. Alright, there's three pots of flour. Now what we'll need is... Three buckets of milk. One per cake. So we've got some dairy cows here. Let's, let's give these things a milk. Oh, thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. I don't like that he's tied up, though. That's a bit poor. Let him free. We'll catch you later, buddy. We're going to run south now to the chicken pen and flog some eggs. Alright, here we are. I've spotted an egg over here. That's one. You can see another one up here. There we go. Egg number two. And egg number three. Okay. Now what we're going to need is a cake tin in order to make our cake batter in. So, we're going to go to our favourite kitchen and downstairs through the trap door. And with the money I withdrew, we're going to purchase ourselves a couple of cake tins. Perfect. Alright, and what we can do here is use our bucket of milk or our pot of flour or our egg. Now if we use that on the cake tin, it'll ask us if we want to make an uncooked cake. Yep, so let's make three of those. 
So we add the ingredients into our cake tin. And there we have three lovely uncooked cakes. Now what do you do with uncooked cake? You cook it. So let's go upstairs and cook these cakes on the range. Cook all three of them. Hopefully we don't burn any. There's one, two, and three. He's got his hat trick. Happy birthday. On the cake, we'll just make one. Excellent, a chocolate cake for Gaz's birthday. All right, here we go. So first step, we've made our pizza base. Tick that off. Then we use our tomato on the base to get a incomplete pizza. So we'll make six of those. Then we'll add our cheese to the incomplete pizza. To then obtain uncooked pizza. Now if we use those uncooked pizzas on the range. We will obtain plain pizza. Right, so we simply add the toppings on top of the pizza to create the various pizzas. Right, so let's start with say a meat pizza. Where we can use our cooked meat with the plain pizza. There we are, meat pizza. It will also be a meat pizza if we add the cooked chicken to a plain pizza. Next, we can get the best free-to-play food. If we add the anchovies to the plain pizza to get anchovy pizza. And we can add either our pineapple ring to get pineapple pizza or our pineapple chunks to get pineapple pizza. Beautiful. There you have it. Oh, God. Ah, beautiful. I didn't speak too soon. Two out of four, not too bad. And we can see the benefit of the anglerfish immediately, as this will heal us above our maximum HP. Right, so we'll cook the slimy eel first on the cooking range. Beautiful. It's gone from green to a nice reddy brown colour for cooked slimy eel. Raw cave eel. We'll just cook them all, why not? To make a nice brown cooked cave eel. And then we'll use our raw lava eel to get a cooked lava eel. Let's get our chef's hat back on. And we'll use our grapes on our jug of water to make unfermented wine. Now I've done this before for cooking XP. You can get huge XP drops by adding grapes quickly to make unfermented wine. Banking, withdrawing more grapes, more jugs of water and putting it in before the timer runs out. Got about 13 seconds. When the timer does tick down, however, there we go, we see we get an XP drop there. The wine ferments and we have a jug of wine. Then we need a pie shell, so we'll go back to our utensil cupboard, we'll take one of those. And we'll add our servery pastry dough into our servery dish. Right, so now we have a servery pie shell. Next we need to cook the servery raw meat. Takes me back to those early episodes of cooking all the different meats around the game. And we'll add that servery cooked meat to our pie shell. To get an uncooked pie, cook that, and beautiful, there is our servery meat pie. So we'll use that on our stew, uncooked stew now. And there we go, we have servery stew. A bowl of water with our dough this time to make pizza base. Love that. Next we need the sauce on the base of the pizza. So we have our tomato added to that to get an incomplete pizza. We'll use our servery cheese on our pizza. Again, now we have an uncooked pizza. So let's cook that on our clay oven. Beautiful, now we have a plain pizza, but to make the pineapple, we are going to use our knife on the pineapple first. And you can see here we don't have the option of making pineapple chunks or pineapple rings. We are simply getting servery pineapple chunks, adding those to the pizza, and there is our servery pineapple pizza. So let's buy a few pats of butter. Now we've got five potatoes. So naturally I'm gonna buy four pats of butter. So let's use that with a potato. There we go, we do get cooking XP from this. And we have potato with butter. Of course, because why would it be garlic? Right, so let's take that. And we can see that the not garlic butter also can be used with our baked potato to make a potato with butter. 
and now we can't distinguish between which one's which because it wasn't garlic butter. Alright, now these potatoes with butter are actually going to be the key to making the rest of our potatoes. Next we'll use our bowl on our garlic to obtain some chopped garlic as we have a knife in our inventory we can chop that garlic up. Then we can add some gnome spice to our chopped garlic. You can see we obtain spicy sauce. Ooh, so technically we've cooked that as well. You can eat that. Let's add our cooked meat to the spicy sauce. And now we have chili con carne. Another food. Let's add that to our potato with butter. And we obtain the first of our unique potatoes today, the chili potato. Right, so this one's pretty straightforward. Instead of eating the cheese, we add it to our potato with butter. And we obtain a cheese potato, or a potato with cheese, if you will. Right, so let's use our egg with one of our bowls. And we obtain some uncooked egg. Well, you know what we're going to have to do with that. Let's go into our favourite kitchen and cook it. Use uncooked egg on the cooking range. And we have scrambled some egg. Let's, instead of eating that tomato, add that to the scrambled egg. Now we have egg and tomato. Let's not eat that and add that to a potato with butter. And we have the third of our unique potatoes, egg potato. Alright, so if we use our onion on our bowl, we will get some chopped onion. I believe we need to use our mushroom on our bowl as well to get some sliced mushrooms. Perfect. And we don't want to put raw onion and raw mushroom on our potatoes, so let's cook the onions first to get some fried onions. And let's cook our sliced mushrooms to get fried mushrooms. And we'll combine those together, funnily enough, to get mushroom and onion. Right, then we can add our mushroom and onion to our potato with butter. And beautiful, we have a mushroom potato. Which... Lovely. And we'll cook our raw tuna. Perfect. Then we'll use our sweet corn on the bowl. And I'd like to showcase that for this particular one, you don't need the knife in your inventory. Right, so we'll drop that knife. Right, so we just crush it up with our hands to get our sweet corn. What's interesting though is to make the tuna and corn in a bowl, we actually need our knife back. Right, because we can't exactly rip apart a tuna with our hands. We're not Gollum. Right, so we add our tuna to the bowl. Now we have tuna and corn. And finally, we add that to our potato with butter to obtain our tuna potato, our final one in our run of unique potatoes. This one heals 22 HP, a fantastic and well-known food. We'll use that on our favorite cooking range. Please. Uh-oh. Yeah, there we go, dark crab. There we go, harvest the fish and destroy the net. Perfect, there is a raw sea turtle. Let's take that. And the rest of this stuff we don't really want. Nice one. Temporos KC, one. And net, let's net the reward pool. Oh my lord, perfect. Manta rays immediately. See, we've boosted it from 90 to 95. Excellent. And we will use the raw manta ray on the cooking range and cook these up. Perfect. Right, so the first thing that we're going to need to make a fish cake is cutting our knife into breadcrumbs. Next, we'll use our pestle and mortar on our raw cod to get ground cod. We'll also need to grind our kelp to get ground kelp. And we'll also need to grind our crab meat to get ground crab meat. Right, so if we use all these ingredients together, you see, they form a nice raw fish cake. We use that on our favorite range and cook it. We get a cooked fish cake, beautiful absolutely demolished the Hellrat Behemoth and I'll just get, show you an example of what you can do post subquest. We can add orange spice to our spicy stew. This is very helpful when doing challenges for things like clue scrolls or achievement diaries. So we can see the list of options there for the orange spicy stew. Here we are, we've got some vanilla plants here. Alright, so what we do first of all is mix our bucket of milk with our pot of cream to obtain a milky mixture. You're always interrupting me, Captain Arnav. Get out of here, mate. 
Then we'll add our pot of corn flour, which you obtain in the same way you would a pot of flour through the flour mill. However, instead of grain at the top of it, you add in raw sweet corn. So we'll add that to our milky mixture and obtain a corn flour mixture. Then we'll need our vanilla plant. Pick that for a vanilla pod. Just add the extra bit on there and you see we obtain a brulee. And we have ourselves a fire. Let's cook our myrng bat on the fire. Beautiful. And we're gonna use our raw rockfish on the fire. Beautiful, there we go. Beautiful. Use butry leaf on gird vial. Xerix Aid Plus, there we go. And we'll use that on our range. 30 XP each. Beautiful. There we go, and it looks like we can make some cheese. Now, I don't know if you're doing it right there, mate. That's looking a bit grim. Maybe you should use the dairy churn. Simply use the knife on the watermelon to obtain watermelon slices. We can add that to our bucket of milk to get some chocolatey milk. Hopefully, we obtain, there we go, some roe, which indeed is a food source. So there's a small chance to get roe each time we cut open a leaping trout or leaping salmon. We can also use our knife on our leaping sturgeon, excellent, to get some caviar. Since we have a knife in our inventory, we can use our bowl on the cooked meat and obtain minced meat. Something that is absolutely not cooked in old school RuneScape. And the same thing goes for chopped tomato. This can be made in the process of making some things we've made in the past, like kebabs and our various potato toppings. However, when I cooked that in that episode, I added the onion to the bowl first. And you can add the tomato to the bowl first, as we've done here and go along that process. But we're using these for a different purpose today. You can see we also have gnome spice and spice, or human spice, in our inventory. And it doesn't matter which one of these we use, we can turn our minced meat, using the gnome spice on it, into spicy minced meat. Next, we can use our human spice, or gnome spice, it doesn't matter, on our chopped tomato, to obtain spicy tomato. I think it's time to turn the valve here and collect our delicious alcoholic apple beverage. Excellent, so we've emptied the fermenting vat there and obtained some cooking experience. So then we use our beer glasses on the cider, I'm guessing. Ah, here we go, beautiful we are ready to obtain our Dwarven Stout. So here we go. Right, so first we'll have to turn our valve to drain the contents of the tank into our barrel. All that time, all that effort, 215 cooking XP, love that for us. Use the beer glass. Mature Dwarven Stout, baby, it's matured. The stuff did its job. Oh, beautiful. It has been a while. Okay, fermenting vat. Vat is filled with Asgarnian ale. Love that for us. Okay, I guess we use beer glass on the barrel. I think we need to turn the valve first. Indeed I do. Turn valve. Beautiful. Now let's use the beer glass on our Asgarnian ale. Lovely. Greenman's ale. Mature Greenman's ale. Oh, I love that. It's matured. How good is the stuff? So good. Yep, it's emptied our... Oh, in our keg. Beautiful. Let's fill up the mature Greenman's Ale. Plus two herb lore for each one. Examine. Wizard's Mind Bomb. Perfect, baby. Excellent. All right, in that case then, we're going to turn our valve... Love that. And we use our beer glass. Let's see if it's matured. It did not. Well, that kind of sucks. But we still cooked our, or brewed, 
our wizard's mind bomb. Mature dragon bitter, yeah baby, beautiful. How many people have made mature dragon bitter? Let's turn this valve, get it into our keg. Beautiful, and fill up our beer glasses. Okay, we're upstairs here. If we examine our fermenting vat, beautiful vat is filled with moonlight mead. All right, let's turn the valve. Looks like it didn't mature. That sucks, but we're up, we're doing a pretty good job of getting them to mature so far. I think um, a decent record. We've had a few mature rails, and there we go, moonlight mead. All right, well let's collect our Axman's Folly. Mature Axman's Folly. Look at that thing, that looks great. Nice little brown ale. With mature, Chef's Delight, I'm sorry, in the vat. How good is that? Oh, beautiful, plus six cooking boost. That's bloody awesome. Bright green color, examine. That is filled with mature Slayer's Respite. Oh, it's just meant to be. Our final brew has matured. I'm so happy I forgot to put on my pants. <laughs> okay, that is awesome. Yes. All right, let's turn this valve and get our final cooking XP of the series. 479. Beautiful. Let's collect our mature Slayer's Respite. Oh, how good. 